And then we are gonna put these on our photo backdrop to... Well, it doesn't hang around, your clothes do. <laughs> Okay. Today we're going to give the old college try with easy DIY backdrops. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And welcome back to one of our loud okay. days in the office. And welcome back to one of our newest favorite series, College Try. If you guys don't know, College Try is the series where we DIY with less power tools, no drill, no problem. We got you covered. We are giving your favorite DIYs the old College Try. And today we're going to be focusing on making easy, cheap, affordable to make backdrops, photo backdrops. Yeah, these are great if you maybe have graduation photos you want to take, if you have any fancy events to go to, maybe you're that friend that got recruited to DIY for a wedding. This is an awesome one to make. Who, who asked their friends to DIY for a wedding? <laughs> Everybody. Everybody. And also, if you need a little LinkedIn upgrade, if you are graduating out of that college and now you're going into the real world and they're like, where's that headshot at? And you're like, oh, I don't have one. <laughs> we can show you how to put together really easy photo backdrops in your dorm room. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start it off a little bit easy using a clothing rack. I know that dorm rooms, small apartments, don't usually have a lot of closet space, so you're probably used to having a clothing rack hanging around. Well, it doesn't hang around, your clothes do. <laughs> uh. No? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we're also going to need a bed sheet. So just go ahead and strip your bed. I chose this light gray bed sheet. Very cute. Very, insert other descriptive word here. Okay, our sheet's in position, but it does look a little wrinkly because you know you've been sleeping on it. It's not freshly pressed. And if you guys don't know, a good hack is to hang it up in the shower and the steam will help um, release some of those wrinkles. So just head on into the, to the shower. Insert shower sound effects. And once you're done with your shower, it should be nice and clean and wrinkle free. Next up, to bring this backdrop to life, we're going to be adding some faux greenery. You can get this from Amazon, you can get it from the dollar store, you can get it from the craft store. Make sure you use a coupon because craft store can be a little bit expensive. Um, I have some faux greenery here and we're just going to be using some good old binder clips or really anything that you can find around your apartment or dorm room to attach these to the top of our backdrop. Cool, that's it. That took like five seconds and now we have this DIY backdrop that's gonna look freaking dope in photos. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna show you how to make this gorgeous watercolor and bokeh light inspired photo backdrop. This one's gonna be really fun to do and I think pretty easy. So the main key component you're gonna need to make this obviously is some watercolor paper. If your school happens to have like a bookstore or an art supply store, you should be able to get a pad of watercolor paper for like five to 10 bucks, pretty affordable. And don't worry if they're smaller sheets because we're gonna end up assembling them anyways. And you can get some kids watercolor paints from the dollar store for around $2. They don't need to be the expensive ones at all. So for this, I'm again using some like literally children's paintbrushes. These are very affordable and a cup of water. You can use your cups from last night's activities. I don't judge. And we're gonna, we're gonna get into painting, okay? First up is gonna be drawing your watercolor design on your paper. This can literally be whatever you're feeling and whatever color scheme you wanna do. Go wild. I think I'm gonna go for some blues and some teals, kinda of make it a little bit night sky-esque. We're gonna give it a go. Okay, so this is how my watercolor sheets turned out. I really like them, I think they're really pretty. So, the next step is going to be sticking them onto something that's a little more secure so we can hang this to take photos in front of them. And to do that, I have some foam core sheets which also, you can get from the dollar store for like $2. They're really affordable. So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some also dollar store craft glue and glue these to the foam core. 
One thing I do want to do is just use a simple X-Acto knife and cut off the rough edge of my watercolor paper. So when I put the two sheets together, they kind of blend and become like a seamless one piece of paper. So if you had multiple little sheets, you could do this as well. Try and lay them all together so it looks like one seamless image. And once my paper is glued on, I'm just using some popsicle sticks, again, from the dollar store. I literally love the dollar store if you're on a budget and using some glue to stick popsicle sticks down the back so we can join these two pieces into one large background. Okay, next up, I mean, you could totally stop here, it's looking great already, but this is a really fun additional element that I wanna to add to this background. So what you're gonna need to do, go home, visit your family, I'm sure they would appreciate that. And while you're there, go borrow the Christmas lights. I'm sure they're not using it anyways, since it's summer. And we're gonna use these on our photo backdrop to create little twinkle lights in the background, and then if you sit far enough away, they're gonna bokeh out and be so Instagram. It's gonna be amazing. So how we're gonna do this is take your good old pen, poke some holes through the foam core, and then stick your twinkle lights through. Okay, friends, this is how it looks, but wait, there's more. Oh my gosh! This looks so cute already, but I think once you see it all styled and put together, it's gonna look even better. All right, and for our last backdrop idea, I'm really excited about this one because it was actually inspired by a little trip to the craft store where they were selling these gorgeous foam flowers for like $10 a piece. And I was like, this is just foam. I need to figure out how to make this. And so we're gonna make it today and turn it into a gorgeous backdrop. And for this project, we're pretty much gonna need just some good old craft foam. We got this one from the craft store and we got a large roll of it for about $10 and that's gonna make about five large flowers for us. And you can also buy individual sheets online, but we found that using the coupon at the craft store was actually a pretty good deal. And we're also gonna need a good old template from the Sorry Girls. Our channel members get templates for free. So if you're a member, go snag your template. And if not, they're up on our website for a pretty low cost. This one right now is 12 by 12. You can resize it to be different sizes because we are gonna do two different size flowers today. But we're gonna start off by cutting out our template here. So you're gonna need to cut out a lot of your flower bases and we're doing it so that three of these templates equal one flower when it's all assembled. So I cut out a bunch of these templates in both the regular 12 by 12 size as well as a 70% decreased size to create the smaller flower size. And the next step is to actually give the petals a little bit of a curl so they look real and not just like stiff foam flowers. And the way we're gonna do that is using a hair straightener because it's the easiest way to go and you already have one of these probably. So ours is actually set to the lowest setting which is 280. So you're just gonna hover over the end of the petal. You don't have to squeeze it too tight. You don't wanna melt the foam but this is again the lowest setting. And then you're just going to curl it with your finger and then hold it a couple seconds while it cools. Obviously be careful, this is a hot tool, but we didn't have any problem touching the foam right after we went over it with the hair straightener. So do this to all of the petals attached to all of the templates that you cut out. Once we have all of our edges curled, it's time to start assembling and gluing them together. So again, I'm using three of my template pieces. We're gonna start by putting some hot glue on the inside of the petal and then rolling it. It's kinda gonna work from like tightest to like open petals. So with our first one rolled, we're then gonna add some glue onto the inside of the next petal and then wrap that around. And then repeat for the other two petals. When we're moving on to the next template, we're adding it onto the bottom, so I just add a little bit of hot glue in the middle center. And then I'm adding some hot glue on one of my petals and I'm just making sure that it lines up in between the gap of the previous two petals. So it's like I want petal and petal and then I want the next one to go here because that's how it works with the flower. They kind of like overlap each row, they don't kind of like all line up behind each other, you know? And we do this all the way around. And then finally we add on our last and third template. We're adding some glue on the bottom center. And when we add the glue on the petal, we're just not going up as high because they're not gonna be wrapped up as high. And then hold it in position for a couple seconds while it cools so that it doesn't fall out of position. All right, so I have a bunch of my flowers complete, some small sizes, some large sizes, and now it's time to assemble them onto a backdrop, which we need a backdrop. 
Good thing I have my old science project here that I can use as my backdrop. If you guys don't have a trifold one because you go to a school out of the 21st century, well, that's good for you. You're probably getting a good education. But if you do have one of these, that's great because now we can do this DIY. Um, all right, well, I'm just gonna, you know, disassemble my science project here so that we don't have this all in the background. Don't need that anymore because I'm done with school. all my roses on it was something like this I'm loving how it looks and if you had a whole team you could bang out a bunch of these flowers you could do like a whole floor to ceiling flower but let's see how it looks as our photo backdrop fun and like surprisingly worked be well. Mm -hmm. And a little bit unique, a little bit creative. People are gonna be like, oh, where'd you go to take that photo? And you're like, I made it. Do you want to borrow the backdrop? That'll be $100, please, because I'm out here making money because I'm a college graduate or high school <laughs> graduate, whatever you is. Tell us which of the three was your favorite below and do you have any fun events going on that you need backdrops for? If you guys want to check out other College Try videos, we will link them down below, maybe in the cards, places like that. And if you like this video, make sure that you give it a like. And if you love it, make sure you sub it. And we'll see you next time. And happy graduation season. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys for always tagging us and sending in your DIY recreations using the hashtag Sorry Girl Squad. We're loving this mirror recreation. The whole room is styled so beautifully. Keep them coming. We love seeing them.